Hello, my lovely friends. My name is Ava, and these are Romance Booktube's favorite books from 2023. I thought it would be really fun to ask a few of my Romance Booktube girlies to tell me what their favorite book was that they read in 2023. I love all of these women so much. They mean the world to me and I cannot wait for you to see what their favorite books are from the year. Hopefully you can get some amazing recommendations when it comes to books as well as romance booktubers. So without further ado, here are booktube, romance booktube's favorite books. Hey, I'm McKay, and while I have read some absolutely amazing books this year, I've had so many great ones. This is one that I think is probably going to end up being my top one, and I have not been able to stop thinking about since I read it a couple months ago, and that is Garen Park by Nordica Knight. This is an MM true hate to love, enemies to lovers, motocross romance. This one follows Devin and Maddox and they have grown up hating each other. They have been rivals in the sport their entire lives and even as adults that hate and rivalry has continued and it's mostly been fueled by their fathers because they live in the same trailer park and their dads always just steal their son's money from their races so they've always really pushed their sons to win and beat the other basically so that way they can have the money from it and all of this kind of boils over one night when Devin ends up knocking on Maddox's trailer's door in search of help because his dad has brutally beaten and stabbed him and he is basically fighting for his life and he shows up at his enemy's trailer because he's looking for his older brother. Their older brothers are best friends and he's in search of him, but the brothers are nowhere to be found. So the only person that is left is his enemy Maddox. And of course Maddox is like, I hate you, but I'm not about to leave you out on my doorstep to die. Get inside like his dad is hot on his trail. So he's like, get inside and I'll help take care of you. And you know, as they start to see each other as people, they start, that hate starts to shift a little bit. But let me tell you, the hate burns so bright between these two for such a long period of time. So if you're looking for like a quick, like, oh, quick turnaround, you're not gonna get that. Even when they start, you know, hooking up, having the benefits moment of their relationship, that hate still burns very, very brightly between the two of them. And it takes them a long time to kind of get on the same page about things. I just can't get over this. This is truly the best hate to love romance I think I've ever read in my entire life. These two just have such an electric connection and I will never get over it. I will never get over these two. And they, I think they just have to be my top spot of the year please check this book out. Hi friends, my name is Victoria from the channel Victoria's Romance Reads and I want to thank Avery so much for letting me come on here and chat about one of my favorite romances of the year and that is Reckless by Elsie Silver. This is book four in her Chestnut Spring series but can totally be read as a standalone and it's a small town romance about Winter and Theo. Theo is a bull riding cowboy and Winter is a prickly doctor and the two of them have a surprise pregnancy romance. They have a one night stand after a family party one night and Winter ends up getting pregnant and she tries to reach out to Theo and let him know about it and she ends up having a miscommunication where she gets information back that she thinks is from him saying that he doesn't want anything to do with the pregnancy or the baby but then he comes back to town after a while and finds out that Winter has a baby, that he has a daughter, and he becomes so all in, not only for the daughter, but also for Winter. And it is one of the swooniest books that I've read in a long time. I personally loved it so much because of how much I connected to Winter, but I also just love the story in general. I love Theo as a hero and how much he was always there for his daughter and for Winter. Winter is a little bit prickly, like I said, and she <laughs> tends to push people's buttons and Theo is always the first one to come to her defense. And I think it's just so sweet and so amazing and it's so good. And I would highly, highly recommend it if you haven't read it yet, but it's definitely one of my favorite romances of the year and please go read it. <laughs>
My favorite book of 2023 is The Seven Year Slip by Ashley Poston. I read this book for the Goodreads Choice Awards this year and I can't get over how deeply romantic the story was. It follows our heroine who has inherited an apartment from her deceased aunt she was really close to and part of the story deals with her grief for sure but the other interesting part of the story, the less sad part of the story, is that she ends up meeting a guy in her apartment. He just shows up one day and she's like, who are you? And she realizes that her aunt didn't lie to her about there being a magical quality to this apartment. She is basically meeting a guy seven years in the past. They strike up this friendship and this relationship and have a lot of like honest, candid conversations with each other until one day he basically disappears. But he does show up in her life in present day and has something to do with her career. She basically has to convince him. He is a chef to... I guess publishes cookbook under her publishing house's imprint. So it doesn't sound quite as exciting as it is, but I loved so many different aspects of the story. I love the aspects of handling grief and talking about family. I absolutely loved the intense romantic connection that these two had. I liked that even though this book wasn't super smutty, it felt very sexy. And I really liked the banter too between hero and heroine. So I am surprised that a traditionally published romance is one of my favorites of this year, but it was by far my favorite book I think that I read this year with a close second going to The Right Move by Liz Tom Ford, but uh, yeah, that is my favourite book of 2023. My favourite book of 2023 was Pipe Dreams by Serena Bowen. This is a part of the Brooklyn Bruiser series but can be read as a standalone and it's about Beacon who is a hockey player and he's a single dad to a teenage daughter and his romance is with Lauren who is actually his ex-girlfriend so it is second chance and Lauren and Beacon used to date. You get like some flashbacks to the start of their relationship, how they met, how they fell in love and then Beacon actually broke up with Lauren and there was a reason behind why that happened which I think was why this book worked so well. The angst was just so good and I really understood why he had to break up with her but also why Lauren was so upset by it and at the start of the book Lauren absolutely hates Beacon but she starts working at the team again and the second that Lauren is kind of back in his life he will stop at nothing to win her back and oh my goodness it was so swoony and romantic and I just absolutely adored the progression of their relationship throughout the book. I also really really appreciated and loved that there was no third act conflict in this book because it just absolutely wasn't necessary with everything going on and I just loved Love when authors like recognize that in a book that it just isn't needed. It was just perfect in every way and I also really like these side plots. So Lauren is wanting to have a baby and she's strongly considering single parenthood before she gets back with Beacon. So that kind of plays into the story and then also Lauren's relationship with Beacon's daughter was super interesting because they don't really get along to start with. Beacon's daughter's kind of going through a lot and there's a lot of tension there and I really like how their relationship progressed throughout the book as well. I thought it was so sweet and heartwarming. And this book basically had everything. Like it was steamy, it was swoony, it was emotional, it was angsty. It was everything I would want in a romance and it was definitely my favorite book of this year. Hey guys, I'm Zay, AKA Witty Reads here on YouTube. I'm so excited that Ava has asked me to be a part of this video so I could share one of my favorite books that I've read and loved this year. So one of my favorite books that I've read is actually a book that Ava and I both love and that is Out on a Limb by Hannah Bonham Young. So this story is about Wynn and Bo who meet on Halloween and they actually have a one night stand together and Wynn gets pregnant and she's very nervous to tell Bo because they are strangers and they have not seen or spoken to each other since then. But Bo is actually so excited and she ends up moving in with Bo so he can support her and just be there for her through her pregnancy. And they actually decide that they're just going to have a platonic friendship and support each other um, on their journey to becoming parents. But they end up falling in love for each other and it just becomes hard and harder to fight their feelings that they have developed for each other. So this book is so beautiful and kind of Adam Young is such a wonderful writer. She just has such a talent with words and this book is one of my favorite books that I've ever read. One of the most beautiful and amazing romances ever. Um, I love this book from the very moment that I started and Wynn and Bo just have left such an impression on my heart. I still think about them and yeah this is one of my favorite books that I've read this year and thank you so much Ava for asking me to be a part of this video. Hi guys, it's Just from Honest Fiction, and before I talk about my book, I want to say a huge thank you to Avery for asking me to be part of this video. But my favorite read by far of 2023 
was Manigold by Senlin Yu. So you can actually read this book on the website archive of our own. It is Harry Potter meets Handmaid's Tale fan fiction, and it is phenomenal. It is one of my favorite books of all time. So this is taking place. It's essentially what would have happened if Voldemort had won the war against the Order of the Phoenix and Harry Potter was killed. So we are following Hermione, who has been kept in this sensory deprivation jail for many years and has now been freed and finds out that Voldemort has started a breeding program. And that is because the children of wizards are not as powerful as their predecessors. So he, Voldemort, decides that he is going to give Hermione, who we know is a very powerful wizard, to the High Reeve, who is his like right-hand man, in the hopes that the High Reeve will impregnate her. So we find out that the High Reeve is actually Draco Malfoy, and it is Hermione and Draco's romance, and it is dark, and it is emotional, but it is also so unbelievably good. And I just, I love this book so, so much, and if you have not picked it up yet, you need to. Hello, I'm Cheyenne. My channel is That Tall Book Girl. Um, I'm so thankful that Avery asked me to be a part of her booktube's favorite books of 2023. The fact that we're even talking about our favorite books of 2023 just blows my mind. I read so many good books this year and I honestly, I feel like it's just hard to pick just one. But I think if I had to, it would be the book that truly impacted me in the biggest way and that I am constantly thinking about and that is Unbreak My Heart by Nicole Jacqueline. I don't know what I thought I was going to feel when reading this book, but it completely blew my mind. In this book, our heroine, she loses her best friend tragically and takes it upon herself to help her best friend's husband in raising their children. And they end up having like a drunken night and end up having a one night stand and she gets pregnant with his child. So she's trying to navigate a life where she's raising her, her child with him, but then also helping him raise his children with her best friend. And he has got a lot of anger. Like he freaking hates her. He hates her. He hates the situation. He hates that he lost his wife. And so you're navigating this relationship where she secretly loves him, but he is like still just heartbroken over losing his wife, but then also kind of falling for her at the same time. And it's one of those things where you're like, how can you love me when you still love her? But like, she can never be again. The angst, the tension, the longing and the pining and truly just like the suffering that this couple goes through just feels so raw and open and something that would happen in real life. Obviously nothing you would wish on anybody, but heartbreakingly beautiful. So I definitely recommend reading this. It's my favorite book of 2023 and I can't wait to see what next year brings. Hey, it's Justin from Justin Ray's Romance. And when it comes to my favorite book of the year, it wasn't really that hard for me to pick it because one new release from the beginning of this year has really stood out in my mind. I've read it multiple times and I just absolutely love it. That's The Right Move by Liz Tom Ford. It's a sports romance, fake dating, opposites attract, forced proximity because they are roommates, romance. And even though it has all the tropes that I love, it's the small little things that Liz Tom Ford does that really sets this book apart. I can't get over how wonderful of a book boyfriend Ryan Shay is. He is literally perfect. No, he has his flaws. But the way that he pays attention to Indy and the subtle things that he does to show her that he cares is what really sets this apart in my mind. I was looking for a swoon factor and this book absolutely delivered. He showed me what romance was about by the way that he looked after her did little things that she mentioned in passing and he remembered them and he would do those things for her and I was just like this is what romance is about this is what I've been missing and I just absolutely love this couple they are standouts in my mind top favorite book of the year probably a top favorite book of all time we'll see if it stands the test of time but I have a feeling that it definitely will Hello, my name is Lisa from Remarkably Lisa, and I was invited to talk to you guys about my favorite book of 2023 on Ava's channel. And my book recommendation is The Seven Year Slip. I'm sure I'm not the only one who loved this book and who would highly recommend this book, but I literally read this once it came out and I still can't stop thinking about it. I just love the intensity of the romance between our two characters. Our heroine is dealing with grief over a death of a loved one. She is now living in the house of her late grandmother. Um, she is going through a lot and her grandmother always told her that the house is magical and she soon realizes that she can travel back in time and she meets this like guy and there's a lot of like angst in it involved when they 
eventually have to separate. And I loved it so much. Five out of five stars. Definitely go check it out. Thank you again for inviting me to be on your channel. Hey guys, my name is Morgan. My channel name is Nothing Better Than a Book. Thank you so much, Avery, for asking me to contribute to this video on your channel. So I have not been able to narrow down my favorite books of the year, but I'm going to talk about one in this video that I absolutely loved and is definitely on that list that I think needs more hype and that is Give Me Butterflies by Jillian Meadows. I read this book earlier this year and absolutely fell in love with these characters and this author's writing. This is her debut book um, and it is so good. So this is Millie and Finn's story. Millie is an entomologist who is interviewing for a department director position at her current place of work and Finn is an astronomer at the same museum and he is on that interview committee. Um, he's very grumpy and they actually had like a little fender bender before the interview and so she is very worried when she shows up that she is not going to get that job. As we keep reading we find out that Finn has recently lost his sister and he is now the guardian to her two little girls and he drops them off to the day camp that Millie is helping run at this museum and so she learns a whole lot about him throughout this and it's really fun. She ends up going over to their house to help make pizza and cookies because the girls tell her that he's a bad chef and so she ends up continuing to go over there to have these weekly dates I guess with the girls to help make food and then they have game nights at her place and it just is so fun so 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 sweet he is such a cinnamon roll hero like I love Finn as a hero and the two of them the tension you guys the chemistry between them you can just feel it I just you have to pick up this book if you have not read this book yet please 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 pick it up give it a try you will not be disappointed I loved this story so much Hello, my name is Riley. My channel is Riley Marie and my favorite romance of 2023 was 100% Butcher and Blackbird by Bryn Weaver. This is basically like a dark romantic comedy following two rival serial killers who become friends and strike up a friendly competition every year where they are both competing to kill the same person. Slowly this friendship, this playful rivalry turns into a very heated romance. This book was genuinely so hilarious and probably the most fun book I read all year. It had me like actually laughing out loud from how funny it was and the crazy situations that these characters found themselves in. But I also just loved the romance between Sloane and Rowan. The chemistry was literally jumping off the page. So this was definitely my favorite romance of the entire year. And if you read it, I hope that you have just as much fun with it as I did. Hey y'all, I'm Robin from Paperbacks and Planners and my favorite book of the year is The Rest of the Story by Tal Bauer. This is an MM hockey romance. It is slow burn, tons of mutual pining, semi-forbidden opposites attract romance. It has a really amazing found family in here, but it does also have some very heavy themes surrounding trauma related to extended abuse, but all of it has this really amazing undertone of hope and love in all of its forms, both romantic love and platonic love and familial love. I sobbed my eyes out throughout this book, but the romance itself is unbelievably sweet. Our main characters are amazing and no one writes a romance quite like Tal Bauer. But I also have zero chill and I couldn't recommend just one book so I also want to shout out the Dominating the Diamond series by Kat Geraldo. Book one is Wild Pitch and book two is Outfield Assist. These books are interracial romances. They are hella queer. The first book is following two bisexual main characters. The heroine in this one is the first female professional pitcher in the MLB and it has a submissive hero. And then and this one is a polyamorous romance following a gay baseball player who is also pan romantic, the heroine who is their like athletic coach, and then the coach's son who is a professional swimmer who may or may not have just given up his career. And the three of them are working together through some rehab, not only for their physical bodies, but all of them are working through a lot of things. I always end up describing this book as three three lost and confused idiots who are just trying to figure their stuff out and fall in love along the way. Both of these are absolutely fantastic. If you really love a queer contemporary low angst romance, 
I can't recommend this one enough. Hi friends, I'm Johanna and my channel is My Cozy Book Space. For my favorite book of the year, it's going to have to be Unfortunately Yours by Tessa Bailey. In this book, we have Natalie Voss and August Cates. Natalie and August actually meet in the first book in the Vine Mess series by Tessa Bailey. And we can tell that they definitely have something going, but by the end of the night, it ends in total disaster. So we open up this book where Natalie needs to get fake marriage married to earn her trust fund for her to open her new business and August is the man for the job he needs to be approved for a loan for his winery and so these two strike up a bargain where they will fake marry so they can both have what they both want sparks are flying from the minute that you open this book the tension the banter back and forth the hate between the characters that's not really hate this was just amazing I loved it so much I binged this book as you can tell by my tabs I absolutely loved it I can't wait to reread it this book had me giggling kicking my feet literally highlighting every page doodling hearts all over and I think the thing that resonated the most with me was the way that August loved Natalie and how he would not give up on her and how much he cared for her and he showed that through his actions. Isn't that what we all want a man to love us despite our flaws and August is that man. He will forever be top book boyfriend for me and I love them so much together. This was fun, swoony, spicy as all get out and an overall amazing time. I couldn't help but choose this book. Hi, my name is Nikki and my channel is Nikki in Bookland. And this was so kind of Avery to ask me to take part in her best books of 2023. And when I sat down to think about this, this was probably one of the hardest decisions I've had to make. I did read some really, really good books this year. So I really had to sit down and have a think. And once I did, one answer kind of emerged from the pile. And that was what we broke by Marley Valentine. This book absolutely gutted me. This is an MM romance that follows Jesse and Leo. When the book starts out, they suffer an immeasurable loss. It's trigger warnings for loss of a child. They do lose their baby. And to kind of add another layer to this story, the surrogate mom who had the baby for them is very close to them, which I won't get into. You can find that out. This story follows them a year after this event and it shows the breakdown of their marriage and how they find their way back to each other. And if you know me, these kind of stories get me every single time. I love the levels of emotion. I love the psychological aspects behind fighting to make a relationship work. And this was absolutely gut-wrenchingly painful. It was beautiful and Marley Valentine always packs a punch. Every book she never misses. She is like my kryptonite of emotional romance writers. So without a doubt, I recommend this book to you. I'm wishing you a very happy holiday and all the best in 2024. Hi everyone, my name is Jessica and I'm from the channel Peace Love Books XO and one of my favorite books of the year is one that if you know me is not going to be a surprise because it is so angsty and it is second chance, small town, single dad, literally every amazing trope that I absolutely love and that is After the Storm by Laura Pavlov. The second I started this I knew it was going to be a favorite. I was obsessed. It is book five in the Cottonwood Cove series but it can definitely be read as a standalone and they had a just amazing romance when they were younger and it just didn't work. It was the right person wrong time. So she went off to the big city to be a lawyer. He stayed in their small town. He ended up having a daughter and he is the town vet and she is back in town to take care of her dad and feelings rekindle and it is so good. There are secret tattoos. There is literally like every trope I'm obsessed with in this book. Very angsty because they are so in love with each other but it had ended and now it's their second chance at love and I'm obsessed. So if you're in the mood for second chance angst definitely pick up After the Storm by Laura Pavlov. Hello everyone my name is Rachel and I am so 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 excited that Ava asked me to be a part of this video. Very excited to talk about my favorite book that I read in 2023. Just to tell you a little bit about me, my booktube channel is Rachel Reads and Sings, and that is because that is most of what I do. I am a professional singer and actor. I'm also a teacher. Um, and I also, of course, am a reader. So my favorite book of 2023 has to be the Bully by Sophie Lark. And boy, does it take a journey to get to this book because 
you really should read the entirety of the Brutal Birthright series, which is a mafia romance series, as is this, of course. Um, and then this series is the second generation of characters from the Brutal Birthright series. So we're following a lot of the kids of the couples from that series. And Kingmakers is such an interesting series. It definitely gives Hogwarts vibes, except there's no magic. It is a mafia college, basically. And this third book, we are following Dean Yenon, who is basically Draco Malfoy. So of course, I'm gonna be obsessed with that. And it's his romance with Kat, but this is one of the best hate to love, enemies to lovers romances that I've probably ever read, given that at the beginning of this book, Dean is blackmailing Kat into essentially being his slave. And somehow they fall for each other <laughs> over the course of this book. And both Dean and Kat also grow so much as characters. And the sex scenes in this are just mm, chef's kiss unique. I mean, some of these scenes still live in my head rent free. So I could go on and on about how incredible this romance and this story is. Uh, but yeah, I definitely want to reread it soon. Hi, my name's B of Mama Needs to Read Romance, and I'm so excited to be part of this video today. Thank you, Avery, for asking me. I want to talk to you about some of my favorite books of the year. For contemporary romance, it was probably Shannon Page's Life is Better with You. We've got Secret Pining, Fake Dating, He Falls First, Cinnamon Roll Hero Yumminess. It was so good. It was deep. The love scenes had the emotion and the spice, which which is just the perfect combo to make just the best debut novel by this author. My favorite fantasy book was Halfling by S.E. Wendell. Again, we have a cinnamon roll hero who just wants to protect Sorsha, a human he is saving from the orcs. Orek is half human, half orc. The two of them fall madly in love in this gorgeous atmospheric road trip romance. He was a virgin and she taught him some things, but it was emotional, beautiful, and the first book in this monstrous world series that I am dying to get the next book of in 2024. My favorite historical romance of the year was Scandalous Desires, Maiden Lane Book 3 by Elizabeth Hoyt. We have a woman who's basically lived a Puritan lifestyle trying to rescue her baby from a pirate. This forced proximity captive romance sees her falling for the dangerous Mickey O'Connor. An Irish accent has never been more delicious. I loved watching him slowly seduce her while she ripped down his walls and exposed his soft underbelly. It was dangerous, it was exciting, it was super spicy, and it was a fabulous time. Oh, hello everyone. I'm Kelly from Kelly Reynolds Reads, and my favorite um, romance book of 2023 was Without a Doubt, Hideaway Heart by Melanie Harlow. Melanie Harlow is one of my all-time favorite authors, and her books are just everything to me. She's a small-town romance author. This book is actually Bodyguard um, Country Singer, which is so incredible. It's forced proximity. This book is so funny. It's so steamy. It's a true just comfort, um, happy read. Um, I actually read it twice this year. I did it, um, you know, on my Kindle and then I listened to the audiobook. Maybe I am a little biased because I do have a personal connection to this book, um, but regardless, this is just one of my favorite books of all time. Um, I've read almost 200 books this year and it's just without a doubt when I think of what the number one favorite book is, it has to be this one because no book just makes me happier. And I think if you love small town romance, you should absolutely give the give this a shot. I think you'll have so, so, so much fun. Again, Forced Proximity, Bodyguard, Grumpy Sunshine, their banter is incredible right off the bat. I think you get really just entertained and sucked into the story and I hope you love it as much as I do. Bye. Hi everyone. My name is Tiffany. I go by Tiff Talks Pages here on BookTube. Thank you Ava for asking me to join the chat. Although the question gives me great anxiety. <laughs> picking one favorite out of all of the reads of 2023. So I'm gonna say just for today, also be that girl in picking a Harry Potter, Draco and Hermione fan fiction, Rename Nameless, 
by Hey Jude 19. This was a romance that I wanted to start from the very beginning upon finishing. I listened and read this on Archive of Our Own and through Spotify, I believe on ETL Echo. It just had all of the markers and hit all of the notes that I aim to see in a romance and their connection just crescendoed. We're following Draco 10 years after the war and he is in debilitating PTSD and a part of breaking up the monotony of his routine and his aim to garner a little peace, he's found a muggle coffee shop to retreat in where no one knows him, which is how he runs back into Hermione. And it is there that their journey from being childhood enemies into friends and then become lovers begins. It's incredibly beautiful. The communication is sound. Draco is a self-actualized hero seeking therapy. And I just loved the way in which they blend their lives together. All of their familial relationships outside of their romance that are blood bonds as well as found. It was incredibly beautiful. <laughs> okay, it is a slow burn. It's heartfelt. It's heartwarming. It had all of the feels. And so if you are new to fan fiction, if you're curious, if you're looking for something that isn't as intimidating in terms of the darkness level because Manacled was also a favorite for me as well. I highly suggest that you pick it up. I cannot wait to see what everyone else's favorites were. Thank you, Ava. Greetings and salutations. My name is Samantha from Books with Samantha and I'm so excited to be on Ava's channel talking about my favorite read of 2023. One of my favorite books that I read in 2023, well, Technically, I read this late 2022, but I did reread it this year, and it is not only my favorite book of the year, but my favorite book of all time. So I'm going to count it, and that is Divine River by Marina Vivancos. She is a Kindle Limited author that is just so good. My favorite book that she writes is Divine River. This follows our main character Mike grows up in a really small town and his family is not that accepting. He is really going through a journey of discovering himself, discovering his sexuality and who he is as a person and he's never had the opportunity to really explore that. One day our other hero, this is a male male romance, Jason moves in next to him and they instantly become best friends. This book follows our friend Sliver's romance but also follows Mike as he is embarking in this journey of becoming his true Yourself, and it is so romantic, so heartwarming, and also super emotional, so I highly recommend it. Of course, in true book lover fashion, I can't just pick one favorite, so these were also some standout books that I really loved. I'll go through them quickly. One is A Diary of Blood by S.T. Gibson. It follows the perspective of our main heroine, Constanza, and it kind of tells her journey as she is Dracula's consort. Another one that I loved is Swallow Your Pride by Sarah Blue. This one was a really fun age gap taboo romance where our heroine falls in love with her dad's ex-business Partner. And lastly, we have Pucking Around by Emily Rath, and this was a poly hockey romance that kind of took the world by storm this year. They're all my favorites. Sorry that I couldn't pick just one, but that's it. Love you guys. Hi everyone, it's Steph from Novelty Corner, and I'm really excited to be back again sharing my favorite book of 2023. And for the first time, I know with absolute clarity and have known since I first read this book on the 21st of January this year that this would be my favorite book of the year. This never happens, and it remains a book that I just continuously come back to time and time again. It is The Rest of the Story by Tal Bauer. This is a queer hockey romance. It is set in an interconnected world of standalone books. So far there are two. So Gravity is the first one. And fun fact, this was the last book I read of 2022. And this came out on the 8th of January. I read it on the 21st and have read it five times since then. <laughs> and it is just a gorgeous book that is both hard hitting and one of the sweetest books that you will ever read. If you have not heard of it, it is about Morgan, who is a hockey player in his 30s who gets traded to the worst team in the NHL. And there he discovers that the team captain is violently and sexually abusive of the other players on the team. Once Morgan gets there, the team starts cleaning out house and Morgan meets Shay, who is a rookie, but he's a rookie who has completed a degree at Harvard. So he is 24. And the two of them are just absolutely precious together. They are one of my all-time favorite couples, the way that they just connect and communicate and have to work through initial complications in their relationship was just so well handled. Tal Bauer does an incredible job with all of his romances, but this is an absolute, absolute standout. If you haven't already read it, I highly, highly recommend it. It's wonderful. There are a bunch of content warnings in here, so do be aware of that and bring a box of tissues. And if you are a hockey fan, there is plenty of hockey on page and it is the one book that simultaneously launched me into my 
hockey romance phase this year, as well as had me actually starting to watch a sport that I, I, I'm not a sports person and this book is responsible for me basically discovering the Australian Ice Hockey League and falling down that rabbit hole all year. So if you haven't read it, I highly encourage you to check it out. Hi, my name is Tori. My channel is Novel Life and I want to say thank you so much to Ava for asking me to join this collab where we talk about our favorite books of the year and my favorite books of the year, hands down, is the Boys of Toman series. And you're going to be like, mm, that's a series, not a book. It's so hard to recommend Redeeming Six by Chloe Walsh because this is the fourth book in the series and you have to read the whole series leading up to this book because I feel like you just won't get all of the emotions and all of the beautiful writing and all of the amazing romances in this story. So that's why I say the Boys of Toman series is my top books of the year. So start with Binding 13 by Chloe Walsh and then continue on with Keeping 13. These two books in the series follow one couple, Johnny and Shannon. They have a beautiful love story and it starts when she is 16 and he is 17 and when she starts at the Boys of Toman College and he is a rugby player which is very cool. He's injured at the beginning of the book so he's struggling with an injury and recovering from that but these two books are absolutely amazing and all of these books take place in Ireland um, which is really cool because Chloe Walsh herself is from Ireland. The third and fourth book in the series is Saving Six and Redeeming Six and this is Joey and Aoife's story. Joey and Aoife are one of my favorite couples of all times. I just resonated so much with Joey and what he goes through. There's a lot of talk about mental health and mental health representation in this book and I really think Chloe Walsh did it amazingly. So yeah, these two you have to read together of course to get their story to get to my favorite book of the year which is redeeming six but um i do want to recommend this whole story and yes they are very long but they are so worth the read i will say there's audiobooks for all four books and chloe walsh recently just got picked up by a publisher which is really cool for this series so i read this whole series this year and i've reread the whole series this year and it is definitely one of my favorites of the year so I would suggest you checking out the whole series if you haven't already. I feel like I'm kind of cheating because I'm saying four books, but you can't really read my favorite book of the year, Redeeming Sex, without reading the whole series. So yeah, thank you so much to Ava for letting me be a part of this collaboration. Hi, my name is Christy and my channel is Christy Reads A Lot and I'm here today to chat about one of my favorite reads of the year, which is An Optimist Guide to Heartbreak by Jennifer Hartman. This book is actually the first book in her Heart Song duet. I read it at the beginning of the year in January and I loved it so much. It has remained a favorite for the entire year. So this one, the hero and the heroine actually knew one another in the past. They grew up as neighbors. They were childhood friends along with his sister as well. But then a tragedy ended up striking their lives and kind of separated them. And so they haven't seen one another in nine years when the story starts. Arts. So this one starts off with a heroine actually moving back to the neighborhood that they grew up in. She actually ends up even purchasing his family's house and living there. And she really wants to reconnect with the hero. So she even tracks him down and finds out that he owns a local car repair shop. So she goes there and kind of wants to be in his life again. And so she even offers to work for him. When she gets there, she's surprised to see the hero is kind of totally the opposite of how he was from growing up. He's a very closed off, very grumpy, very broody, very just like cold and tries to push her away. She's like the totally opposite she's very sunshiny vibes and she's determined to kind of bring joy back to his life so she is determined to work for him and be in his life any way she can so this one is just filled with a lot of angst and tension they have this kind of like heartbreaking past that is discovered as the story goes between them and it's just so good we have a tattooed hero he's very possessive he is closed off but she is like determined to break down his walls he has a kitten there's that close proximity with them having to work together she eventually has to stay with him as well when something goes down and it is just so good so much it's so much slow burn like it's so satisfying it's such an emotional ride if you love grumpy sunshine i definitely recommend checking it out hi you guys my name is carrie and this is booked for romance thank you avery for letting me come on and hang out with you for a couple minutes um honestly i have to give a big applause to fantasy romance this year it has really knocked it out of the park some of my top books of the year are fantasy romance. I could think of 10 off the top of my head, but the one book I'm going to give you, it's not going to be Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros, which everybody's probably heard of. And if you have not read this, please do yourself a favor and do so. I'm not going to recommend Serpent in the Wings of Night by Clarissa Broadbent, which again, if you have not heard of this book, please read this book. I mean, gosh, 
you have a human girl, you have immortal beings in a trial. Honestly, this is so good. If someone hasn't recommended it, please do. I want to recommend an author that I feel like has not really been so known yet. Like she's getting out there, but hasn't really like blown up like these last two authors. Her name is LJ Andrews. You might know her from the Broken Kingdom series, which is like the first series to the book I'm going to recommend. And the book I'm going to recommend is The Ever King by LJ Andrews. This one is a spinoff to the Broken Kingdom series. Um, You don't have to read the Broken Kingdom series first. You can just go into this one. This one is about a pirate king and he ends up kidnapping the daughter of another king. The ever king himself has wanted vengeance for a long time because the opposing king has trapped him underneath the sea and also the ever king has wanted vengeance against his other kingdom because they had killed his father. So you have vengeance, you have innocence, you have Think Pirates of the Caribbean, because this encapsulates it all. You have a songbird, you have a scarred hero. Honestly, if you give anything a shot, please give LJ Andrews a shot in the Ever King. I hope you guys enjoy it, and until next time, we'll talk soon. Bye, y'all. Hi, I'm Lacey from Lacey Book Lovers, and one of my absolute favorite romances that I read in 2023 was the Mindfuck series by St. Abbey. This did not come out in 2023, but I read it this year, and I am so obsessed. It's epic and mind-blowing, super dark, violent, and graphic, but it's so addicting that you just can't stop reading. It's a truly unforgettable story about a serial killer heroine and the FBI agent who is trying to hunt her down. It's literally one of the best dark romances that I've ever read and I loved it so much. I loved everybody's responses. I can't wait to read so many of those books. They look so stinking good. I thought I would talk about mine to wrap up this video, which is no surprise to anybody who watches my videos, but it is definitely Out on a Limb by Hannah Bonham Young. This book came out earlier this year and I am absolutely obsessed with it. This is the romance between Wynne and Bo. They accidentally get pregnant. Um, they end up meeting at a Halloween party one night. They have an epic night together, if you will, and they are very intrigued by the other person and see something there. But things kind of happen a little fast um, when Wen figures out that she's pregnant from that night. And thus starts their forced proximity relationship that is friends to lovers. You wouldn't think that a one night stand to more would be friends to lovers, but it totally is. These two end up moving in together to help raise this baby that Wynne is going to be having, and they end up connecting in way more ways than they thought possible, and they cannot wait to be parents, and can't wait to be parents together in this, and they at first don't want to ruin their friendship because they don't want to jeopardize the relationship they could have with the baby, but things kind of go out the window at a point in this book, and it is everything. I love Bowen Wynn. I love the disability representation in here. It's own voices for limb difference. Um, Wynn in here was born with a limb difference. See her little hand? And then Bo is also an amputee. So I just loved the disability rep and connected to this book in more ways than I thought possible. I cried. I laughed. I smiled. I grieved with these characters. So if you love books that tick any of those boxes, I recommend Out on a Limb by Hannah Bonham Young. It's absolutely beautiful to me. Anyways, there you have it. I hope that y'all got some amazing recommendations from some amazing romance booktubers. Let me know down below if you've read any of the books that my friends talked about today or if you plan to. And also mention your favorite book of 2023 in the comments. I would love to know. I want to also thank all of my friends for being a part of this. I love y'all so much and Y'all have amazing taste in romances, so I hope more people pick up the books that you talked about today. I hope everybody had a fantastic 2023 with some amazing books. If you just want to comment an emoji today, you can definitely comment a book stack emoji. Um, but anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye, y'all.